Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Spath, and I'm the executive director of the Indiana Center for Middle East Peace in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're a voice of conscience for peace, justice, human rights, and intercultural encounter. I'm also a member of the Palestine Israel Network of the United Church of Christ, a member of the Global Kairos for Justice Coalition, and I work with ICAD USA. I'm glad to be talking with our friend, Eamon Shaka. I'm going to let people in. Director of the Center for Community Resource Development in the Old City of Nablus. The center serves the poorest of the poor in Nablus with a health clinic, dental clinic, kindergarten, women's center, and uh, uh, health, I mean, and cultural heritage center. Eamon was recently awarded the French Choir of Honor by the President of France for his role in, quote, supporting and developing cultural, social, humanitarian, and health services in the old city. The center is one of Indiana Center's longstanding mission partners, and a few of, a few members from our most recent Solidarity Tour and other uh, members of other Solidarity Tours have been with Ayman and myself at the center in the old city. Ayman, welcome. Thank you, Michael, and uh, hi to everybody. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak with you. It's a bit unfortunate. I wish it was been under different circumstances, but uh, thank you for uh, hosting me. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Well, it's uh, we, we, we want you to know, Eamon, that uh, we stand with you. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, I wish we were talking to each other on a happier occasion. Uh, these are dark and dire days for Palestine. We'll get to Gaza in a minute, but right now, tell us how you and your family are doing and tell us what's going on in Nablus. Actually, as uh, as you know, uh, Michael and our friends who have been here, since October 2022, Nablus is a, is a closed city, a lot of checkpoints, but uh, starting, last, uh, starting the 7th of October, uh, all the checkpoints around Nablus are blocked. Uh, the main entrance to the south of Nablus is uh, the main street, actually, to, to leave Nablus is uh, out of reach for Palestinians, completely closed for us. We cannot uh, use it. The main street, the, all the, the, the businesses on that main street are closed since uh, October 7th. Uh, the city is very sad. People are very sad, very ang very. Uh, oh. Very sad, very uh, uh, anticipating the wars, actually. Unfortunately, we are anticipating the wars for Nablus and for uh, Palestinians everywhere in West Bank and Gaza. Uh, it's a very depressing situation. Uh, if you walk in the city, it's completely empty. Nobody's coming in, nobody's going out. For me to go out to my of other office in Ramallah, which is around 45 kilometers from Nablus, I have to take uh, roads in between the villages, the dirt roads, in order to reach there. And all, all it's worth mentioning that it's very dangerous to circulate on uh, on roads between the cities now because of the violence of the settlers and the Israeli army. For me and my family, we are still safe. But as I told you, I'm always uh, worried about uh, my my kids, worried about my wife, my my uh, relatives here because it is a very, very tense situation here. Tell us about um, your center, and we'll, we'll talk more about it later, but uh, I do know that your center was a, a triage unit uh, for some of the violence in the West Bank, especially in Janine uh, and, and other villages in and around Nablus in the central part of Palestine. Uh, has the medical clinic uh, been busy or is everything just shut down? No, actually, the, the clinic is very busy these days because, uh, you know, uh, people are, are uh, anxious, are afraid of the future. So they try to, and anxiety causes a lot of other illnesses, unfortunately, as you are aware of. So we, uh, we are trying to help people here, either with the clinic or even with the psychosocial services that we provide trying to count people, talk to the youngsters, the children, the women, 
and uh, in order to be ready, now we are preparing. We are in emergency case in the clinic. All the staff we are we would have to be prepared for the worst. Palestinians in the West Bank have been also protesting against the Palestinian Authority, uh, highlighting the the well long simmering uh, Palestinian ang anger against uh, President uh, Mahmoud Abbas. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Actually, it's not that uh, intense concerning the PA because we know that almost they have nothing. They have they can almost offer nothing in this situation. People are frustrated and they are angry with everybody. It's not only a question of the PA, yeah. but uh, uh, people are angry. They want uh, they want peace, but we cannot have it. They, we want prosperity, we cannot have it. We want our freedom, we cannot have it. And uh, I think uh, this also affects the PA and the president. All what's happening now is weakening, actually, the PA, the PLO, and the president himself. So it's not really mainly was targeting against the PA or the president. It's it's uh, it's a comprehensive anger. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to the work of your center in Nablus in a little bit, uh, but let's talk about Gaza. Um, do you have any contact with anyone there? Yeah, of course. I have and family. What are, have... Tell us what you're hearing. And uh, yeah, just tell us what you're hearing from your friends in Gaza. Yeah, of course, I have uh, colleagues and I have friends. I have family in Gaza, actually. Uh, I lost uh, contact with them since three days. I don't know. I know that their houses were demolished, at least for my part of the family. The house was one of the, the one of the, the first uh, neighborhoods that were targeted. It's called the Rimal neighborhood. Uh, I don't know where they are now. Because as you know, Gaza since October 7th, uh, no electricity, no water. Uh, internet is very, very rare. Uh, for the colleagues, some of them are safe, but that is, I, as I told you, they are 90% of them lost their houses. Uh, it's very difficult to, 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 to have information from there directly from them. Those that I, some one of one colleague in particular that I'm able to contact on, let's say, daily basis, what he's describing is completely hell. It's hell that broke loose in Gaza. Uh, he has a certain medical condition. He cannot find his medication. Uh, he cannot go to the hospital. Even when he managed to go to the hospital, he was not a priority in view of, of what's happening there. Uh, he told food is very scarce. Potable uh, water is almost uh, as rare as uh, gold, if I might say so. Uh, the term that he uses, hell that broke, broke, loose, broke loose in Gaza. So they have, every night they don't know if they are going to survive the night or survive the day. Uh, but one thing that they are all told me that they are not going to leave Gaza. Either they live there or they die there. This plan of, of uh, displacement, nobody's accepting that. There's an imminent ground invasion uh, being planned, we understand. Actually, what uh, after what they have seen, I don't think that there is anything that can be added to their misery. Uh, if you, if I don't know if you, some of you have been to Gaza. Gaza is a very small and very dense area. If you throw a rock from the sky, you will be sure for 99% that it will hit someone there. So... I think the amount of fire that has been used on Gaza was used by the U.S. Army on Afghanistan in one year. This is what the statistics the statistics say. So, uh, all complete neighborhoods were completely carpet bombed, uh, completely erased. There is no signs of the houses that we have been there. Uh, so uh, ground invasion, I don't know what it will, I don't think that it will add to the misery that they are already living. Till one, in what, in 15 days, we have more than uh, 5,100 uh, uh, death, more than 15,000 uh, injured. Uh, the loss, the, the number of uh, people that lost to their houses is rising uh, in, in, a, in, in a very dangerous curve, 
very steep curve. I think now we're talking about 1.1 1 .1, uh, 1 1 million persons that have been have almost uh, forced to leave their uh, houses. So uh, I don't know, and even they, they don't know what a ground invasion will add. In fact, they say that when the ground invasion starts, maybe they stop bombing uh, from the sky. Mm. Um, let's let's just get right into this and talk about Hamas. Um, you know, in the West, in the West, it's Hamas, 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 right? Uh, um, talk to us. We'll we'll get into the reasons why uh, Hamas may have attacked at this point, but just from your perspective, as a Palestinian who's been involved in Nablus government and with the PA, um, you know, as an advisor to the previous mayor, and you know who knows the politics of the region, talk to us about Hamas. What is, for many of our listeners, what is Hamas? Hamas is uh, a resistance movement with the religious ideology uh, it has been uh, it has been created in uh, 87 1987 and it's one you know, the, the second biggest political party in palestine after fatah they are not part of the plo but uh, they are, uh, they have a lot of supporters within the palestinian community as a resistance movement uh, they're hardcore bases in Gaza, of course, but they have uh, uh, affiliates all over the West Bank and uh, even on most of the Arab countries. As a resistance movement, they have their own doctrine. Of course, it's not the ideology now of the PLO. The armed, the armed resistance is no longer an option for the PLO, for the PLO but it's uh, the main doctrine of uh, Hamas. Uh, there is a lot to say about Hamas. I don't know if this is the right venue. No, for sure. Uh, but, uh, cannot uh, just shortcut uh, uh, more than 35 years of history in uh, in a few minutes. Sure. Uh, I have some other questions I want to ask you, but we have a question from uh, one of our board members, Linda, who was just with me uh, at the center in Nablus in June, and she was also there in 2018. Do you, she asked, do you have any casualty numbers as of today, including children? Do you believe Hamas's actions were in some way the delight of Israel to now utterly conduct their ethnic cleansing without restraint? Actually, uh, Linda and uh, my friends, this has not started on the 7th of October. For you who have been here, uh, Israel attacking Palestinians since more than 75 years. We have massacres, we have uh, permanent killing. Actually, without Hamas in the West Bank, even in, in Nablus, my city, with the, has the Israeli just since October last year, they have killed more than almost 100 young men and women. 100 persons without these uh, pretext of Hamas or the attacks. The killing or the attacks of the Israeli army on the settlers has never stopped since 75 years. So I don't think that they need the pretext to kill Palestinians. Unfortunately, this is our situation. It's, uh, I think, uh, not correct just to limit it, to limit this history on start and started from October 7th. Uh, as I told you, uh, since 75 years, we are under occupation and we are under permanent attack either by the Israeli army or the, by the settlers. For those of you who know who knows a little bit about the history of the Palestinians, they know that since 1948, a lot, a lot of massacres have been committed against the Palestinian people, like what's happening now in Gaza, and even uh, in some cases uh, more violent, not in the quantity, but in the in the quality, in the in the way the action has been uh, done. And for those who would like to know more, there is a film that have been uh, directed and created by Israeli filmmaker. It's called the Tantura. I really encourage you to see it, to see what, to, to understand a little bit of our history with uh, the state of Israel and with the settlers and with the people who, who 
created Israel and what they did to create this state to our people, to my people. Tanturo, T A N T U R. I'll send you a link, uh, Michael. Please, thank you. Yeah. And she also, Linda also asked about casualties, including children. Do you have any numbers since October the 7th? Yeah, it's more than 5,100 uh, uh, casualties. More than 30% are, are children. And that's in Gaza and the West Bank? In together? Gaza, in Gaza only. Okay, do you have any? In the West Bank till today, we are at 91 persons since October 7th. We're at 91 persons killed in the West Bank since October 7th. More than 1,200 1, uh, detainees just in since October the 7th. More than, uh, I think, 500 uh, uh, wounded persons since October the 7th. Every day, I think it's, it's a ratio of three persons per day are killed by either the settlers or uh, the Israeli army. Uh, more than 50 persons per day are detained, are arrested by the Israeli, Israeli army. That's you know, on a daily basis. Yesterday, just uh, one, one mile behind me, two young men were killed just here in Nablus. That was last night, like exactly 24 hours ago. Mm -hmm. So this morning, two young men in uh, a refugee camp near Ramallah. This is on per on on daily basis. That's what's happening here. There's been so, a lot of go, go ahead, please. So it's okay. What and 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 in comparison of what's happening in Gaza, the the numbers are radical. But but uh, the 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 green light that the the Israeli government got from the you know, the government of the United States, from the governments of Europe, it's a green light to kill as many Palestinians as they can to create as much damage as they can, and they are doing it. Well, I was going to wait to, to ask you about uh, the green light from uh, from President Biden and, and many of the uh, leaders of the European countries, but as long as you brought it up, uh, his whole career, uh, President Biden's been uh, an absolutist in his support of Israel. He just uh, visited and embraced Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, um, do, does he have do you, does he have any understanding at all uh, uh, of of the side of the Palestinians? Did he give any indication? I don't think so. I don't think he wants to understand. I, I don't think even the the the, the surrounding or his uh, advisors are re reflecting the real image of what's happening here. Uh, as an example, the, on the first day, he said this uh, famous lie of 40 children that we are deca decapitated and proved to be li a lie. These kinds of lies, and unfortunately, what the media, the Western media, is, as uh, most of the mainstream media are uh, reflecting about the situation here, is really inciting hatred for all either Palestinians, Arabs, or Muslims. And you have seen what happened to this kid in uh, in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you have seen what happened yesterday in Illinois and in, in during a, a demonstration when uh, I think he was a Zionist. He, he he brought arm and he fired against the, the demonstrators. That's yesterday in Illinois. Another one in. Uh, uh, I think it was in Minnesota, tried to run down uh, some of the demonstrators by his car. Yeah. This is what reflects, well, this is what the, this hatred reflected by the mainstream media, the speeches of, of the remarks of uh, President Biden, Biden and his administration towards what's going on here. They are inciting hatred uh, towards uh, Palestinians, towards Arabs, towards Muslims, and towards people who support the right of Palestinians to get their freedom. And this is very dangerous. We're gonna we're gonna come back and talk about the media because that's been something I've been keeping my eye on. I want to ask you a couple of questions about that. But before we do, there's been a lot of talk about there's been a lot of questions about well why why this moment why why now that Hamas attacked Israel and I I guess I just want to uh, keep teasing out maybe some of your thoughts if you don't mind. Uh, Jerusalem journalist Nathan Thrall uh, uh, said that uh, it came from a, a, a feeling of 
the utter hopelessness of the of uh, uh, the Palestinian people, or I've been calling it an act of desperation by Hamas. And I'd like for you to take a look at each one of these in order. Uh, Palestinian overtures of peace have been rejected. Of course. Um, uh, may I, Michael? Yeah, please. And and well, I have got four of these. Uh, yeah. You want me to just? I'll I'll, think... I'll, tell you what, I'll I'll read all four and then. Okay, go. Ahead. So we have we have the most racist uh, Israeli government in history. I mean, at least in terms of the rhetoric. Right? I mean, it's been racist the whole time, but really in terms of the rhetoric and the policies and nation state yeah. law. Okay, Palestinian overtures for peace have been rejected. They feel abandoned by their Arab allies because of the Abraham Accords. And, and now is, uh, the Biden administration is pushing for a peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And it's as if the, uh, the Biden plan is just like the Trump plan. Let's make peace in the region, but ignore the Palestinians. You know, let's, let's not involve the Palestinians. And then the fourth one, even when Palestinians resist nonviolently that doesn't change anything and they get ignored so those are the four reasons i've laid out for for one you know at least some of the factors what's your take and and tell me may i may i add a fifth reason please when you keep 2.5 million palestinians in an open air an open air prison for more than 17 years what do you expect Gaza is an open air prison since 17 years. People there are suffering. I think they have uh, uh, an employment rate that is more than 55%. They have uh, very minimal uh, medical care when they need to have an operation or to be to get treatment for from cancer, for example. They have to come to the West Bank, and this is only possible with a special permit by the Israeli army, and you get negotiated and asked to work with them in order to get this permission. This is one of the reasons. I'm, I agree with all the fourth reasons you have already said. Uh, the, 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 since Oslo, let's say, say 35 years ago, I think the Palestinian leadership has offered all over what, whatever they can to push for peace. They accept. They really uh, uh, accepted everything. They even uh, compromised a lot of things. They uh, accepted. They uh, even in the in the, in some in the eyes of some Palestinian, some Palestinians, they gave a lot, even more than what they should have done. But in return, what did we get? We get uh, one of the most extremist uh, Israeli government in history. When with two ministers that have been convicted by their own government earlier as inciting terrorism and inciting hatred, I'm talking about Bingvir and Smotrich. Yeah. By the Israeli yeah. law, they are criminals, and they become ministers. And they just today, really today, I've just seen the video. Bingvir is distributed has distributed more than 300 M14 uh, uh, M4 uh, rifles. To the settlers in the West, in northern West Bank, that's to say near Nablus, 300 pieces of 300 assault rifles have been distributed to the settlers. They are the settlement or the settlers are just taking this opportunity on 12 uh, settlements near Nablus. They are doing expansions. 12 settlements are being expanded, and more Palestinian land is taken now. One of them just near near really near Nablus, they are just uprooted till to date more than 200 olive trees in this season now where the the the, the people in the village should uh, should pick their olive trees more than 200 olive trees have been uprooted to build a, a playground for the settlement all this oppression will lead to something should must be, this is this is a fact of life you cannot continue oppressing people and do not expect a, a, an explosion. You know, the Let leader uh, has, okay, the, the, uh, the, we managed to, uh, to, to fail the Trump plan. 
but what's happening now is more dangerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trying I mean, to strict to strike peace with Arab uh, countries on the expense of the Palestinian cause. Of course, this will lead to frustration. Let me let me let me pursue this a little bit further with you, Eamon. Um, there's a, we hear in our our, our media, I'm, and I'm going to get I'm going to get to the role of the media and its destructive and dangerous tendencies. But we hear that there's a danger of this um, uh, expanding to a regional, more of a regional conflict. So. You know, Netanyahu now threatens Hezbollah, you know, in Lebanon. Uh, they keep talking about the dangers of Iran, uh, Iraq, Syria. Uh, Tony Blinken, uh, Secretary of State here in the U.S., says that we're that we, the U.S., are ready to get involved if it expands beyond Israel and Gaza. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Actually, who the... the... The, the the party that threatened uh, Lebanon and uh, Syria, it was uh, the American administration. It was not only the Israelis. It was not Netanyahu. And uh, the the airplane carrier that is just in front of our shores, in front of uh, Haifa, uh, is a clear message that for all the countries in the in the region that the U.S. Army is ready to 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 protect Israel and if this escalates. And just one question, Michael, for all of you, who is paying for this? It's your tax money. Yeah. So yeah, and that's, that's, that's the sobering, that's the sobering thought for those of us who are, who speak a word of peace and justice in our country. Uh, that's a, that's a word that challenges us. So, this involvement of the American administration in this conflict and just in support of, of one part over the other actually struck me when uh, Blinken says I'm here as a Jew, not as an American. Or when Biden says that uh, if he wasn't a Zionist, he should have, if Israel was not created, they should have created it. This kind of, of, of rhetoric what do they expect that this would create in, in, in our mentality, in the Palestinians or in the Arabs or the Muslims? Let me they ask. Have the hatred, they incite these negative thoughts against uh, the states. But for people who know people, for like me, who people who knows people like you, they know that's not that's not the case. It's not the scenario. It's not the the, the whole truth. Let me ask you. Uh, um... How targeted? How targeted do you think are the Israeli airstrikes? Are they? Uh, I mean, are... Not at all. it's carpet bombing, really. And you see it from the casualties. You have to think well, all of you have seen the videos coming out of Gaza. You have seen it's, when I see, when you see it's mainly women, children, and uh, civilians that are targeted. These are people, just now I've seen a CCTV uh, from a one, people were just sitting under their house, old men, children, just sitting having tea under their house and was immediately, it was bombed without warning. They were parried, really parried under their house. And this is just, uh, the, this video has been released. It's not normally, it cannot say it's targeted. Let me tell now we are on day 15 of the war. The missiles from Gaza have not been stopped. It's on daily basis, with the same, almost with the same ratio, the same number. What are, what, what, how you can call this targeted airstrikes? What they have achieved till now? So, no, 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 it's just collective punishment, it's genocide, it's uh, mass killing. Yeah. We used to talk about uh, we used to talk about apartheid as you know, that 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 what's happening in Israel and the West Bank and Gaza is apartheid, but really is ethnic cleansing and genocide, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. We exactly. Need to, my friend. Um, I mean, language, the language that we use is important. Of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, we 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 hear uh, as well that. Uh, 
Israel and Egypt, you know, have allowed, uh, I mean, they've been kind of emphasizing that Israel and Egypt have allowed trucks with humanitarian aid uh, into uh, Gaza. But it was only just a trickling of maybe a couple dozen trucks, wasn't it? I mean, it's not nearly, it the not 20 nearly trucks. enough, right? Not nearly uh, enough. When, uh, just uh, let me tell you this, uh, my, uh, my friends. In usual days, Gaza or Rafah crossing, at least 500 trucks were used to enter on regular days without war, without thing, without emergency, without pumping. Yesterday, they allowed only 20 trucks with no fuel is allowed. Uh, the medical supplies were really uh, minimal. Food is... Uh, no, 20 trucks for two and a half billion, two and a half million uh, persons living there with a situation of crisis. You know, today they had to operate without anesthesia. They do operation on the light of uh, mobiles. So, yes, no, no, yes. this is just, uh, just to, to convince that they are trying to do something humanitarian, which is not the case, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's uh, get right. In. And by the way, Sarah, I do see your question. I'm going to hold that one and ask that at some point. But I do uh, I do want to talk about the media and the role of the media, uh, because it's something I emphasize when I talk about uh, Palestine. And so um, um, I want to I want to ask you two questions and then a third one that uh, Blake has asked here. So let me ask mine first and then we'll get to Blake's question here in the chat room. Uh, the media has been targeted, not just since October the 7th, but has been targeted by Israel over the last couple of decades and more. The Al Jala uh, building was leveled, housing Al Jazeera and the AP a couple of years ago in Gaza. A little over a year ago, Shireen Abu Akla, a, uh, a Palestinian American, a uh, journalist was targeted and murdered by an Israeli sniper. Uh, numbers vary, but at least 11 Palestinian journalists have been killed since October the 7th. Exactly. Bringing the number to over 21 in the last uh, number of years. Talk to us about the targeting of journalists uh, uh, by Israel. Uh, they uh, they don't want the by the way not not just Palestinian journalists but you but a, a no, foreign no, no. journalist covering the covering the the situation. Actually, they don't want to the reality to show up. Today, uh, I know that some of uh, French journalists wanted to come to Nablus. They were not allowed to enter. They don't want uh, journal journalists or press to cover the reality of what's happening. They want to hide the real image. They want only their version of the story. But when a good journalist, an honest journalist is here, he will really reflect what he sees. And they don't want this. In Gaza, there are more than 11, you were right, were, were uh, killed during uh, the last uh, two weeks. Uh, the example of Shireen before and others, a lot of others. It's a, actually it's not only war uh, with with uh, with warfare. It's only all also war with media, all war with uh, economics, war with image, even with the social media platforms. The is the Palestinian content is being fought either with Facebook, with. Uh, uh TikTok with uh, Instagram with today with LinkedIn I've read that terrible uh, uh report about LinkedIn hiding hiding and uh, uh, uh panning Palestinian content it's really a war a war on all aspects of life against the Palestinians and the Palestinian narrative so targeting uh, journalists is one of one of the effects of this war the uh, <clears throat> that was the second question I was going to ask you. Uh, the Israeli propaganda machine went in uh, full full force. I mean, it's been it's been very active over the last decades, but really since October the seventh, it's everywhere working, isn't yeah. it? To spin to spin the narrative. Uh, do you want to say something more about uh, 
uh, the, the propaganda ministry, really the ministry of Hasbara uh, in in uh, in Israel, and how it how it permeates it it permeates throughout the West, not just actually uh, to some extent uh, they have succeeded on the first three days of the war, they have succeeded, but with the help of uh, with our efforts, with the help of uh, a lot of friends all over the world. We managed uh, to to re re reflect the the correct version of the story, to really explain what's happening here. Uh, they started with a lot of lies that the the, the Western media proved to be exactly right, uh, uh, lies. So their propaganda. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, people were convinced in the few in the first few days but i know i think now the we have a different version of the story which is the correct one the reality of what's happening uh, but as i said uh, unfortunately the social media platforms the mainstream media is still uh, panning the, the, the palestinian narrative to show the, panning the reality of what's happening to be shown on uh, mainstream media and on uh, social media platforms, but we are still fighting. You know, on uh, with my team, I have a team that's working day and night just to really uh, tell the story of what's happening here. Uh, from like, for example, yesterday, uh, four from six stories were initially banned either by Facebook or by, by TikTok. Of course, we bleed. Uh, we we objected and the uh, TikTok responded to our objection, but Facebook did not. So it's, uh, it's on all the fronts that are possible against Palestinians. But as I told you, we are not surrendering. We are doing our best to, to, to fight against these uh, the spies of the media. Well, uh, that we anticipates... The unfortunately, uh, but <laughs> we are doing our best. That anticipates uh, Blake's question. Here, I'll just read it to you. Does Ayman have recommendations for media sources to follow to get some of these more current happenings? In other words, where can we get the real story? Al uh, Jazeera is a good example. Al Jazeera English is a good one. Uh, for me, I follow mainly Al Jazeera. And because of I'm on the ground, uh, I usually get my news from firsthand, either from the, my friends and colleagues in Gaza, or uh, I'm living actually the incidents. But I really recommend that you go to uh, Al Jazeera English uh, to reflect. Uh, it, they are very honest in uh, reflecting the real uh, story. And uh, maybe I could ask some of our friends here that are listening in, uh, Maybe if you could help uh, uh, put some some of the sources that you follow, I'm thinking of Electronic Intifada and Mondo Weiss and and others. But maybe some of you might want to uh, to type in the chat room uh, some of the sources where you get your information that might be helpful for the rest of us. Um, Israel's police commissioner Kobe Shabtai, you're in the West Bank. You're in the yep. West Bank in Nablus, but he's threatened now. Uh, I want to I want to ask you about Palestinians who are within Israel itself. Uh, oh. He's threatened to send Palestinian citizens of Israel to Gaza for showing or, or, or expressing support for the Gazan people. Yeah. Uh, what do you hear about targeting of Palestinian citizens? Not only what I hear, what what I know actually, and even today okay. I was with a with a, mm -hmm. a lawyer friend who lived who work, who's uh, an Arab, a Palestinian living uh, in Israel. Uh, one of his colleagues just put a like on a Facebook uh, uh, a post that uh, against the war in Gaza. He was disbarred immediately. Uh, doctors or who, everyone working uh, uh, there, if he shows the least uh, uh, support to the, to, for example, for a slogan, Free Palestine, he's persecuted immediately, either imprisoned or uh, uh, fired from his job. I know a lot of doctors, a lot of nurses, a lot of uh, uh, people work, we are fired or suspended from work because of they showed, because they should support uh, to, to, to the Palestinian people, to their people, actually. 
and this is happening on daily basis. Uh, anybody who show who puts a like or uh, adds a, a positive comment uh, comment uh, for the Palestinian uh, or against the war is immediately punished there, either by imprisonment or get, or losing his job. <laughs> And uh, really, this is uh, they have now special units just uh, 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 scanning the social media for persons who live uh, in, in Palestine 1948 or in Israel, uh, and they immediately persecute them. We, I think, most of us on this call know the answer to this question. But uh, and and you're living it. But I, let me ask it so that you can so that we can hear it from your mouth, Amen. What is Israel's end game? Israel says it wants to root out Hamas so it can live in security. But tell us what you think is its ultimate goal. You know, eradicating Hamas is an impossible mission. You you cannot actually eradicate an idea or an ideology. There are people that are convinced that uh, uh, that Hamas is, the, is a resistance movement. You cannot simply say uh, that we will eradicate uh, Hamas or the people who are affiliated with it. But I think now their end game is to create this buffer zone of all northern Gaza to re to to. Uh, 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 make people leave their houses there and be placed otherwise being uh, the, the, this plan of displacement i know that they uh, target that people should of gaza should go and live in sinai but sinai is egyptian land this is their goal is to to to, to empty half of gaza to create uh, what they call their buffer zone because they know that they cannot uh, Really, and it has been said by their generals, by their, uh, re to some extent, I don't know if this exists, reasonable politicians that they cannot, uh, or eradicating Hamas is, uh, is not uh, an attainable objective. They should look for more uh, more realistic objectives. And one of them that I know is their plan to evacuate half of Gaza. Yeah. And if this happens, the, I, I'm totally convinced that the next step will be evacuating half of the West Bank. You said, you, you said, you said uh, uh, half of the West Bank. Yeah, yeah. This will be the next step. If they manage to succeed in this play on this on, on evacuating half of Gaza or convincing the Egyptians that uh, these Palestinians should live in this empty desert of Sinai, this plan will continue to the West Bank to fulfill their dream of of creating the bigger Israel, or what they call <laughs> Hebrew Eretz Israel. You're talking about mass expulsion. Exactly, exactly. You know what do you call now the the expulsion of of the or the the evicting of 1.1 million Palestinians from their houses. No, the way, if you look, I don't know how many of you seen the videos of, of the destruction of Gaza. It's really carpet bombing all the northern part of Gaza. No, whole neighborhoods where it's ground zero now. Whole neighborhoods. Really ground zero. You can see nothing. Not one single building standing. And you are talking about neighborhoods that are... Uh, very highly, very densely populated. I know we think now we have this estimate number that we are still having to 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 look under the building for one more than one thousand five hundred Palestinians are are buried under their buildings that we cannot reach them. So this is their plan. This is the ultimate plan. Evacuating I mean, as many Palestinians as they can. There's a question here from Kathy. Uh, do you believe Israel will occupy northern Gaza if and when all Gazans move south? They won't move south. They have already taken this decision. Uh, but I think occupying and staying there is not an option for them because it's very costly. 
and uh, security wise it's not it's not possible just they want to create a buffer zone an empty space they want to send to pull away <laughs> to to push away as much Palestinians from northern Gaza as as, as they can and uh, I'm sure of that if this succeeds, uh, the next step will be the West Bank. I'm hoping now with the, with the, all the pressure that's happening on the streets of uh, either uh, in the States or in Europe or in the most of the world cities will help us in easing this pressure again uh, that is put against us. Hoping that they will, that their, the governments will see that they're their voters are not happy with what with their decisions. You know what happened in London uh, last Saturday. This was impressive. More than I think more than two hundred fifty thousand persons on the streets. This should mean something to the government. Finally, you are the voters. You one are the ones who choose them. Yeah. Yeah. You're. Uh... I think of your center in Nablus as um, as your one of the ways you, as a person and as a community leader, resist. It's it's part of your resistance movement, uh, as well as serving the community, of course. But you know, I mean, it's all it's all uh, 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 in, intersected. Uh, so I want you to talk about. Talk about your center in Nablus, what you do, who you serve. Tell us about your center. You know, the center is, uh, has been established. I created the center 25 years ago, exactly in uh, 1998. The main purpose was and still helping uh, the underprivileged, underserved people of the old city. Uh, the old city, for those who don't know, is really... The, the heart of Nablus. It's a historic old city that has been uh, built uh, 2,000 years ago, full of history, full of antiquities, full of uh, uh, stories. Uh, and my go my mission in Nablus is to serve the people uh, and the old city. We offer uh, mainly medical services, where we have this charity clinic, we have dental clinic, uh, medical lab, uh, general uh, family medicine, uh, family doctor, and we have an emergency center. Uh, we offer with my colleague and uh, co-founder, Arub, uh, we offer uh, psychosocial services for the women of the old city. And some of you has participated uh, participated in one of on these sessions where it's really one of the rare occasions where women can be within women and talk freely of of things that they are, they are interested in and that is of concern to them. Now, this is one of the uh, things that we are emphasizing on to ease the stress of the people, of the women and the children. Uh, we have a kindergarten that was more around uh, 50 uh, uh, kids from the old city and it's almost uh, almost free. All our services are free, almost free, uh, just to say. Also, for my own uh, interest is the cultural heritage of Nablus. Of course. Hopefully, very soon, I will have the first museum that will tell the story or the history of Nablus. Uh, in addition, uh, the special attention now to kids, youngsters, uh, trying to uh, 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 say move the... Uh, Modem or trying to help these young youngsters how to start their life correctly, helping them in either uh, their study or finding a job or uh, solving a problem. Uh, the, we have now a special interest also in uh, helping the handicaps in Nablus area, uh, in uh, either providing wheelchairs or providing daily uh, uh, things that they need or even modifying the house or the workplace or the school that people handicaps with wheelchair can have accessibility to, 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 to these areas. Uh, actually, you can call this the house of the old city. Whomever has a concern, can he knows 
people those say they know that they can come to us and we'll do they are sure that we'll they we, we will do our best to help them so it's mainly it's a passion it's my mission in Naples uh, since 20 more than 25 years there's a question about does the center have a website uh, do you want to tell us if it does can you tell us what the website is I'll put it's a Facebook page uh, people here tend to use Facebook a lot so I'll send you I'll put I send uh, Michael the the address. There's another question about uh, how many cities in the West Bank are locked down with citizens not able to leave. Actually, uh, most of the cities are locked down, but special emphasis now is on Nablus, uh, the Hebron, and Jericho. Okay. And by the way, if if we look at if we look for if we look for Center for Community Resource Development Nablus on Facebook, we could find it. MCRC. MCRC. Yeah, I'll send you the link uh, right away. Okay, thank you. I want. I'm glad you brought up Arub. You know, she's uh, she's a bundle of joy and energy. Um, <clears throat> in addition to her women's group, does she still have her radio show? Yeah, shows and, actually. <laughs> shows. Okay. Yeah. And, and as as you have uh, implied, she's a a radio a respected personality with, for her adv advice, counsel. Exactly. Uh, she deals with psychosocial issues and advice. Um, so, so this is a multi-part kind of intersectional question uh, because she deals with family issues, women's issues, and issues regarding children. Talk to us about what she's hearing from the women, but also uh, about the concerns of children, especially in these very anxious days and family life, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, as you know, in times of stress and war, uh, people tend to be very, uh, very scared. And usually in our culture, it's not easy to discuss such topics in the house. So they refer to our room, especially women, uh, just to, 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 to talk, to ask for advice. What can she tell the, her children? How she could manage the house? Now, uh, because of what's happening, the economic situation is really, really, really bad. There's no, most of the businesses in the, in the city are uh, not working. Uh, so this leads to certain questions that we are usually capable of answering, how we can help them, how they can help themselves, how, what kind of uh, things you should tell her children that these, when they see such videos of, of children of their same age that are being killed. This kind of advice that we are providing now, uh, talking to the either on radio shows or on a women group or even one-to-one. -one. When they come to the center, they can, they know that they can drop in without an appointment whenever they like to, to ask for advice. And this is what we are doing now. A lot of uh, demand actually because of this situation. Unfortunately, but this is the reality of uh, living in Palestine. We we'll give Arub our warmest, warmest greetings and affection. Right, should, and should, should, she was she was really anxious to to, to join this uh, room, but uh, this interview. But she has uh, family obligations. Um, I have one more question, and I'll ask you Sarah's question, and that's how we'll close because I'm aware of the time. T tell us. Uh, <clears throat> I have a feeling that this will, this this won't be good news. But tell us where you think things will go from here, in the short term and uh, in the long term. What will <clears throat> what will it take to achieve a ceasefire? Um, you know, just where will we'll things heading? I don't know. Nobody knew. We are we are asking this question uh, x hundred times per day. We don't know where are we going. We have never seen such uh, amount of, of, of uh, violence here. Uh, we have never lived such uh, uh, atrocities. Uh, we don't know where we are, we are, where we are going. Actually, I think this is the first time when you see that it's really what we call it, it's a pilgrimage of Western world leaders doing pilgrimage to Israel. This is, we never, we have never seen that. And one, none of them, 
came to visit uh, the West Bank. If I was to come, if I was to, if I was to come over today, if I was to get over in a plane, come over, could I get to Nablus? Could I come and see you at your center and at your home? Uh, you have to take uh, certain roads that you are not uh, familiar with. It's road between the villages, not from the main entrances. You cannot. Okay. You cannot. You know, I uh, um... roads that you have used to take now it's impossible. Um, I do have one other question I, I, I missed here. Uh, and I know this may seem inappropriate, and I know you're a humble man, but you want to say a word about the award that you received uh, for the work of the center in uh, Nablus? Uh, actually, I prefer not, it's especially that really, and uh, uh, this is the second time of the, um, in, in view of, of, of uh, the French government position toward what's happening here. I'm thinking of just returning this award to them. Ah, I was going to ask you about that as a follow-up. I have that as a follow-up question here. Yeah, in, view, uh, you in view, but what uh, really calmed me yesterday, uh, I received, uh, actually Friday, I received a message from my, a lot of friends in France, a lot of supporting messages that uh, their government does not represent them. Actually, I uh, received a letter from a mayor of uh, one of the biggest cities in France just supporting us and uh, saying that the government does not represent them. This is not what they are. This is not what they think of Palestinians. And uh, I receive such messages on a daily basis. But for the government, I'm really disappointed. And I've said it. I've said it frankly in front of their uh, ambassador here, in front of this, in front of their staff, of, to all the friends I have France. I said I'm very disappointed uh, of what of the positions of your government. Let me uh, uh, let, let me uh, wrap this up with a question. And I'll let you have the last word, Eamon. But uh, where have you found the most support? And Sarah's question now: What would you like? What would you most want to see from allies like us in the just United States? Just to speak States? out. To speak and, out. And what would be most helpful or effective in this moment? Just to speak out, really, to 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 tell your uh, Congress uh, rep representative, your senators, that you are not in your names. This should not happen in your in the names of decent people like you. This is the most efficient and helpful uh, uh, things to do. There, they should know that that's not what the American people want. And I know that you represent the real American people. This is what, you know, that kind of feeling when I when I meet Michael when he comes here, we hug each other. This is real friendship, real allies. Your, your representative of the Congress and the Senate should know this, should know that they should not make these atrocities and support this warfare in your names, because that's not you. This should not happen in your names. And this is really the most helpful thing to do now. I'm not asking for demonstration. Just try to your representative at the Congress and then the Senate and let them know what you really think, that you are not giving them green light to do this in the name of the American people. And finally, it's your tax money. Yeah. It's your money. I think they have a lot of other priorities in the state that where money should go not in a foreign war that you have nothing to do with. Yeah. You know, we, uh, I want you to know that the people on this screen send you not only our affection, but our support, our, and our solidarity. I'm looking at the screen here and I see one activist after another, after another, after another, all around the United States. And even, like I said, our friend Walid Shomali in Beit Sahur. And so I want you to know that these people that you're seeing here on the screen and their names, they stand with you. And I'm sure of that, Michael. I'm sure solidarity. Of that. I'm sure of that. And thank you all for your support. And I uh, hope you continue and really write to your congressmen and uh, senators, asking them to stop this nonsense. Do you have any other, you have any other uh, maybe parting words for us, Eamon? Uh, just keep up the good work and uh, thank you for uh, uh, listening to me a lot and uh, 
really understanding what's happening here. This is a big thing. As uh, we are real, this, we are living real genocide, real ethnic cleansing, uh, and if this continue, we'll. Uh, I hope I'm sure that it will not they fulfill their ambitions of of uh, eradicating the Palestinian people. But with one thing, because we know that we know that we have a lot of friends like all over the world that will not allow it. Just please uh, keep up the good work, keep your faith in in in, in helping us and supporting the, the 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 life of the Palestinians, the freedom of Palestinians. And uh, I emphasize on this: please do write to your to your representatives in the Congress and the Senate. This will help a lot. Well, uh, we do, thank you all. We for... we love you. Send our love to Arub and I will. friends from all over the country. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye.